All right, so we are here with Lauren Popik, who is a registered dietitian at Orlando Health. Yes. Thank you, Lauren, for meeting with You're us welcome. and being a part of the drive this year. Thanks for having me. So our big push this year is to talk about nutrition. Okay. A lot of guys look to Dr. Google to find what they need to be eating, especially to get themselves built up mm -hmm. and have that perfect six pack. Is that really a good <laughs> avenue to go for a lot of this information? I don't think it's necessary. I like to recommend going for foods first over supplements and definitely talking to a registered dietitian, a nutritionist or your doctor rather than going to the internet. Um, we want to encourage people to look for evidence-based studies and looking for things that have um, been tested on a large number of people and have good results. Mm -hmm. So I think that taking um, supplements, yeah, a lot of times when I talk to my, my guys about what they're eating, they're getting a lot of the things they need from food and the supplement isn't really necessary. Can supplements have like risks to them associated if we take too much of it? Definitely. If, they're, if you're taking too much or if they're being combined with other prescription medications, so you always want to check with your doctor first mm -hmm. or again a dietitian or nutritionist can help you. Um, determine which one is safe or a good choice for you. So at the gym, I see a lot of guys taking all these pre-workouts and taking mm -hmm. all these supplements to boost their muscles and raise their metabolism. Yeah. I personally think that's very risky. Okay. I don't know what your thoughts on that are, or is there anything out there that is much more natural that can do the same thing? I always go for food first. So if there's a reason where someone cannot get enough protein or not get enough vitamins and minerals from food, then we may look for a supplement. But before working out, um, some carbs is good. Some complex carbs, things like fruit and oatmeal, things that are gonna give you sustained energy after a workout, just some good protein. That'll yeah. help to rebuild those muscles like Greek yogurt or eggs or tuna fish. So bagel with cream cheese uh, and eggs and all that stuff, probably not not the best pre-workout <laughs> meal. <laughs> pre-workout, you just need a little bit to give you a little boost. So just a little yeah. bit of carbs, maybe a pear or an apple, something that will um, have a little bit of fiber, not too much. You don't want to upset the stomach, but just kind of give you that slow, steady release mm -hmm. of the glucose to sustain you. So you mentioned earlier uh, something about sugar and it's linked to acne. I thought it was just oily foods and stress and all that yeah. stuff, but sugar, what, what is that? Well, exactly? sugar has kind of an inflammatory effect, so mm -hmm. it can cause inflammation in all areas of the body. And so some, in some people, it can actually um, pop up in the skin too. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, like mine right now. <laughs> so I gotta stop eating sugar before the drive. Um, so are there any supplements that guys should be taking? Um, I like to recommend omega-3s okay. because I think omega-3s are something we've seen that can help with increasing testosterone, um, which a lot of men are seem to be lower in. Maybe it's related to weight. We know that being a higher body weight or having more body fat can impact testosterone and Americans are becoming more obese now. 39% of Americans wow. are okay. obese. So I always um, like to recommend omega-3 intake. Mm -hmm. So if they're not getting it from food, then we recommend a supplement. So what would some of the foods be that would give you omega-3 naturally? So your fatty fish are gonna be the best way for your body to absorb it. Salmon, sardines, mm -hmm. um, mackerel, even tuna fish has some. And then um, if, if you're a vegetarian, yeah. then there are some good plant sources, things like walnuts, Chia seeds, ground up flax seeds, yeah. those are good ways to get it too. So you do something very unique here in your office yeah. where it's a very integrated system. Uh, when, when the physicians and the dietitians, nutritionists are all, all work together. So can you right. tell us a little, about, a little bit about how that practice works here? Yes, I work very closely with the physicians and there's about nine of them here in this practice. So they refer directly to me and if we can make it work on the same day, if the patients have the time, then the patients can come right down the hall mm -hmm. from their physician and see me and I can help them with whatever diet plan they need um, or they can make an appointment and come back another day. So the biggest fear my patients have is that I'm gonna go see someone like you and then they're gonna tell me not to eat all the things that I like to eat. <laughs> so there, there's like a fear uh -huh. of, of coming to see you because the reality is gonna hit. <laughs> is, is that true? Like, are you just... I think people feel that way, yeah. but um, when, when after they leave our sessions, I hear over and over again, thank you so much for not being the food police and thank you so much for not taking everything away because I feel that I can work with what you tell me you like and what your preferences are and we don't have to take everything away. It's about making just a little bit better choices with what you're currently doing yeah. and finding what um, will keep you happy. I mean, food brings us joy, so we don't want to be miserable. We want to just make it a little bit better. Uh -huh. And um, the whole point is to find um, what works for each individual. So is breakfast really the most important meal of the day? Not necessarily. Yeah. I don't necessarily think that. I think that um, 
you know, some people can skip breakfast and be totally fine. Mm -hmm. It's really about what are your energy levels? What are your needs? Are you getting the nutrients throughout the course of the whole day? Yeah. So I don't think it's, um, you have to eat breakfast every day, but I think that getting those, if you're not getting those nutrients in, the ones that most people eat at breakfast time, then uh, you, you know, you may want to reconsider. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because I've always talked to uh, people that don't have the degree you do, and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, you got to eat mm -hmm. breakfast, you got to eat all these things, and then, you know, you got to mm -hmm. trickle yourself down. But I'm glad you said that because I don't like to eat breakfast. Mm -hmm. Actually, when I eat breakfast, I'm really tired throughout uh -huh. the rest of the day. Okay. But when I kind of skip breakfast and start eating slow meals and then have a big lunch, uh -huh. I'm much more energetically eat much less coffee. Maybe that's just the way I am or? I think you bring up a great point. That's the way you are and everyone's different. I've been a dietitian 18 years, so I've mm -hmm. worked with a lot of people. Probably earlier on in my career, I would say, yes, breakfast is the most important. You have to do it. But now I find a lot of people aren't eating it and we can still give them a healthy um, menu and it'll still work. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of like you. I don't eat breakfast every day. Yeah. And sometimes all I need is that coffee and I'm ready for getting those superfoods later in the day, and it works. Yeah. Superfoods, what are some yeah. of the superfoods? Oh, berries. Berries, berries. okay. Yeah, absolutely, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries. Okay. Yeah. But not like a whole bowl full of them. <laughs> you have to have some portion control. Right, controls. portion control. <laughs> handfuls, we think handfuls. <laughs> so, Lauren, right. if you had to give guys three tips right now, three tips um, on what they can start changing in their life today before mm -hmm. they can get to see someone like you, Yes. Um, what would those three things be? My three things, cutting down on saturated fats. Saturated fats, we know that increases inflammation, increases cholesterol, the bad cholesterol. So looking to reduce butter, sausage, bacon, those animals, foods that have a lot of saturated fat. Oh, Number two, cut down what on sugar. What about New York sugar. pizza? Does that have a lot of saturated fat? Because we're it going to New York, does. so. Oh. You just need to get light cheese, not like the loaded up one, just a little bit lighter. Okay, all right. Okay. And, and just eat one slice, not the There whole you go, pie, so. and maybe a salad on the side. <laughs> okay. Um, two, sugar, you gotta cut down on sugar, mm -hmm. especially those added sugars. So natural sugars are fine, like fruits and oatmeal and sweet potatoes, but soda, cookies, we don't have to give them up completely, but yeah. we definitely want to reduce because, again, we know that's linked with um, higher weight, which can increase heart disease, diabetes, obesity. Okay. Um, number three, I would say sodium. Watch mm -hmm. the sodium. And eating on the road, eating out. A lot of guys eat out often um, mm -hmm. because it's quick and easy. Um, maybe they're not doing as much cooking as the women are. So paying attention to how much sodium's in your food. The American Heart Association now recommends 1,500 milligrams per day. 1,500 milligrams. 1,500 milligrams per day. So I've actually looked this up. A supersized fries okay. uh, um, <laughs> at some of the fast food joints is like over 1,000 milligrams yeah, of sodium. Yeah, right, right. So you can get everything in basically one Almost happy Almost a meal. whole day's amount. Yeah, in one meal, right. Oh, that's insane. Yeah, so just look it up. You can use your smartphone. You can use an app. You can find this information really easily. Yeah. And if you do want to have something salty, then balance it the rest of the day. Eat salad and fruit and things that naturally don't have sodium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the better you eat now, the better decisions you make today are going to lead to living a happier, longer, healthier life in the future. So, Lauren, thank That's you so right. much yeah. for sitting down with us. You're welcome. You. My name is Lauren Popek, and it's time to drive for men's health.